Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this Organic Chemistry Lab video covers an organic spectra interpretation experiment. This is part 3, Solving Unknowns B through H. In another video, I went through Solving Unknown A, going step by step through the interpretation of, of a mass spectrum, IR spectrum, proton NMR spectrum, and carbon-13 NMR spectrum, and then using those spectra to develop fragments of the molecule, and then putting those fragments together to generate a complete structure. In this video, you're going to solve for unknowns B through H. I'm going to take you through the spectra so that you can see them, and I'll point out a few things that are important to note that you might miss, but ultimately you're going to go through and solve these. I'll start with unknown B. In the mass spectrum of unknown B, there is an important feature that you should note, and that's the molecular ion here is at 60 mass to charge ratio. It's not the peak at 59, and the reason for this is that the molecular ion in this particular species is really unstable. It's quite delicate. It decomposes quite readily to give a big base peak at 45. The molecular ion is so small you might miss it, so we're just telling you it's at 60. That's important because if you thought it was at 59, you'd be pretty confused. The IR spectrum for unknown B is shown here. The important thing for this one is to remember that you're only working on the functional group region of the molecule and you can just ignore this fingerprint region which contains a lot of complicated peaks that are difficult to interpret. You just want to get the major peaks in the functional group region, that region between 1500 and 4000 wave numbers. Here's the proton NMR spectrum for unknown B. One of the things that's important to note about this particular spectrum is that there's a signal here out around four parts per million that's actually got seven peaks. At first glance, it looks like there might only be five. If you look carefully, you can see two small signals on either side. Those are important. There's actually seven peaks here. This is a septet, which means it has six neighbors by the n plus one rule. That's going to be important for solving this structure. One other thing that's sometimes confusing, if you look at the big signal at 1.3, that's actually a large doublet. Some people wonder, is that two singlets? Is it a large doublet? It's a large doublet. The carbon-13 NMR spectrum for unknown B is shown here. There are only two signals. Now, this is interesting because this molecule, I will tell you, has three carbons. The reason there's only two signals is that there's some symmetry in this molecule and that some of the carbons are the same. There's an internal mirror plane of symmetry in this molecule that makes two of the carbons the same. That's something to watch for in some of these spectra. Unknowns B through H contain a few high symmetry molecules that have some nuclei that are the same and give the same signal. Now moving on to unknown C, here's the mass spectrum of unknown C, and something significant here is the molecular ion region. There are two peaks here of roughly equal intensity. The first one is at 122, and the second one is at 124. You have to read the X scale carefully to get this, but each tick mark on the bottom is actually two mass units. So two peaks of equal intensity separated by two mass units. That's trying to tell you something significant. Here's the IR spectrum for unknown C, and once again, I'll just remind you to ignore the fingerprint region. What's interesting about this spectrum is just how boring the functional group region is. There's very little going on, and that's an important feature that you need to make sense of. Here's the proton NMR spectrum of unknown C, and there's a lot of rich detail here in terms of splitting. We have a triplet, a sextet, and another triplet. The splitting will be really important for solving the molecule. So will the integrations and the chemical shifts. Here's the carbon-13 NMR spectrum for this molecule, unknown C. There are three signals in it. Now we're moving on to unknown D. Here's the mass spectrum for unknown D, and here the base peak is at 94. And I need to tell you that in this case, this 94 peak arises from a rearrangement. All the other unknowns in this exercise, B, C, E, F, and G, have base peaks that arise from a simple fragmentation of one bond breaking. This is a little more complicated. It arises from two bonds breaking, and it's not something that we discussed in this class. This is not something that's typically taught in an undergraduate organic class. It's kind of an advanced concept, so don't worry about assigning the base peak for this particular molecule. I will just tell you it's at 94. The molecular ion is at 122, and there's nothing particularly odd about it. Here's unknown D's IR spectrum. One of the things I'll tell you is that there is a peak here at 1500 that's significant to get. The fingerprint region kind of starts at about 1500, but if you see a peak at 1500, that could be something significant, so you should try to figure that out. There's one particularly strong peak in the fingerprint region at 1250 that you might find useful as well. Here's the proton NMR spectrum of unknown D. One thing I want to point out here is that there's a signal at about 7.0 that is a complicated multiplet. Complicated multiplets like this can't be analyzed using the n plus 1 rule. 
if you look at this multiplet, it's quite a bit different than the others that we've seen that have been split into nice symmetrical groups of peaks like triplets and quartets and doublets. This has got a very irregular pattern to it. When you see a multiplet like this that has no symmetry to it, that's kind of very complicated looking, that arises from complicated splitting that isn't easy to analyze. You can still get the chemical shift information out of this signal, you can still get the integration information out of this signal, but you can't get any splitting information out of this signal. So don't try to do that, don't try to assign this as a doublet, a quartet, because it's not appropriate here. If you try to do that, you'll be confused. Here's the carbon-13 NMR spectrum for unknown D, and this one is a fairly low resolution spectrum, so I'll just tell you that there are six signals here. Each one of these is a single peak, and that means there are six unique carbon types in this molecule, and you need to figure out what they are. One of the things that's interesting is this peak near 160. It's kind of at the border of a couple of different regions, so you should keep that in mind when you're looking at your tables of carbon-13 NMR data. Here's the mass spectrum of unknown E. This is a new unknown that we're gonna be looking at. Here's the IR spectrum of unknown E. There's one especially strong signal in the fingerprint region just above 1200 wave numbers that could be significant, in addition to the peaks in the functional group region. Here's the proton NMR spectrum of unknown E. The carbon NMR spectrum for unknown E is shown here. It has four signals. That means there's four unique types of carbon. And moving on to unknown F, here's a mass spectrum for unknown F. One of the things that's significant here is the molecular ion is odd. That's something to take note of and try to figure out what it's telling you. Here's an IR spectrum of unknown F. Here's the proton NMR spectrum of unknown F. One of the things I want to point out here is this signal at about 2.5 integrates a little low. In other words, when you're trying to develop your ratios of protons, this one will come out a little lower than it should. That's something that happens sometimes. Experimental integrations in NMR peaks are not perfect, and sometimes some peaks end up integrating a little lower than they ought to. So just be aware of that. The carbon NMR spectrum for unknown F is fairly simple. There's just two signals. That means there's only two types of carbon atoms. There are certainly more than two carbons in this molecule, though. So again, this is a molecule that has some symmetry, and you'll need to figure out what that means. Unknown G has a mass spectrum that's shown here. It has an IR spectrum that's shown here. Again, this is one that has a peak at about 1500 that you should try to figure out. The proton NMR spectrum for unknown G is here. And one of the things that's interesting about this one is just how simple it is. First of all, there's only two signals and those signals are singlets. This is the proton NMR spectrum, but it's very simple. The carbon NMR spectrum for unknown G is also quite simple. It just has three signals. Here's the mass spectrum of unknown H. One of the things you should be aware of is that the molecular ion region here has two peaks, one peak at 140 and then a significant M plus two peak at 142. You should figure out what that means. Here's the IR spectrum of unknown H. And here's the proton NMR spectrum of unknown H. The signal at 7.2 parts per million is another situation where we have a complicated multiplet that can't be easily analyzed by the N plus one rule. So again, with this type of signal, just get the chemical shift data and the integration data from it. Don't try to decipher any splitting for this particular signal. The carbon-13 NMR for unknown H is shown here. There are a couple really fine lines here at around 128, and there's a total of six signals in this particular spectrum. So there are six unique carbon types in this molecule. Those are all the spectra that you'll have to work with. Best wishes in figuring out these structures. Initially, when you start solving multi-spectra unknowns, it's going to be slow, it's going to take quite a while, and you might get frustrated. Keep trying. The more experience you get interpreting spectra, the easier it'll get, the faster it'll get, and pretty soon you'll be a pro at it. So hang in there. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.